Okay, here's another interesting linear combination question. Consider two vectors, a and b, and consider all possible linear combinations of these vectors, alpha a plus beta b, such that the coefficients of the linear combination add up to 1. This question is designed to help you practice linear combinations and to help you get used to this wonderful connection between algebra and geometry, which is what linear algebra is all about. Now, to begin answering this question, just take a look at a couple of particular values of alpha and beta that satisfy this constraint. How about 1 and 0? 1 plus 0 is 1, so that's a valid linear combination for this problem. Uh, so when alpha is 1 and beta is 0, this linear combination is equals a. So we're right here, and we won't actually draw the vectors corresponding to this linear combination. We'll just draw their tips. Because in all of these questions of shapes and sets, all we're interested in is where the tips fall. So we won't draw the vectors, just their tips, and we'll see the overall shape. Let's find another particular combination that works, which is beta equals 1 and alpha equals 0. And of course, then the linear combination evaluates to b, and we're right here. So now we have two points. That's certainly not enough to get an idea of the shape. So let's construct a few more points. How about taking alpha equals one half and beta equals one half? Two halves certainly add up to one, so that linear combination works. So now we have to evaluate half a plus half b. There are two ways to think about that linear combination. One is half of a, and two if you add half of b. I'll think about it differently. I'll think of it as a plus b over two. So a plus b falls right about here by the either parallelogram rule or the triangle rule, whichever one you prefer, but it'll be here, that's a plus b. And then a plus b over two falls right here, exactly halfway between the tip of a and the tip of b. That's kind of nice, and it's kind of saying take half of a and half of b. So geometrically, it corresponds to being exactly midway between a and b. Whereas before, alpha equals one and beta equals zero, said so take all of a and none of b, and we were right at a. So it all makes sense both algebraically and geometrically. Let's throw in a couple more points. How about two and negative one? So one of a, two of a, and now from two of a, two of a, we have to subtract b, which is going from this, the tip of two a, in the direction of minus b, and that lands us right here. So this corresponds to alpha equals two, and beta equals minus 1. How about minus 1 and 2? So 2b, it's minus a plus 2b, so let's do 2b minus a. You see, this is the tip of 2b, and from here, I will go in the direction of minus a. Not in the direction of minus a, but by the amount of minus a. And that will put us right here. So this is 2b minus a. Okay, so I think now we can tell what that shape is. That shape is a straight line that passes through both A and B, or through the tips of A and B. Let me try and draw it as straight as I possibly can. That's not too bad. So that's the answer to the question. It's a straight line that passes through the tips of A and B. And as you go in this direction, alpha is increasing and beta is decreasing, and in this direction it's opposite. Beta is increasing, and alpha is decreasing. Now we've solved the problem. I just want to point out one other thing, which is a nice algebraic and slash geometric way of thinking about it. Because this can be rewritten if you think of beta as one minus alpha. That's called solving the constraint. This is a constraint. If we solve it, solve it for beta, then we realize that beta equals one minus alpha. So imagine for a moment, 1 minus alpha in place of beta. So then the whole linear combination can be written as b, that 1 minus alpha, it'll be b minus alpha b. And combining alpha a and alpha b, we can write it this way. So what's the advantage of this way of writing? Well, there are two advantages. One is algebraic. Whereas here, in this linear combination, we had to worry about the constraint imposed on alpha and beta. 
We have to think about coordinating alpha and beta and keep making sure they add up to one. Here, because we have solved the constraint, alpha is completely unconstrained. Alpha can take on any values from negative infinity to positive infinity. So there is greater freedom in working with this expression. So that's the algebraic advantage. But the geometric advantage is that it gives you the perfect picture of what's really going on and why it's this straight line. And it's because if we draw the vector a minus b, which from what we talked about previously, of course, it's this vector right here. This is a minus b. What this expression tells us to do is says take b and when alpha equals zero, zero, you're done, you're right at b. And then varying amounts of alpha will just add to b a certain amount of a minus b. So for example, when alpha was one, it just adds a minus b to b and we land right at a, as we did before for alpha equals one. And when alpha equals two, we again start here, but take two of a minus b and we're right here just as before. And if we take alpha equals minus one, we'll just slide in the opposite direction along the vector a minus b. And we take one amount of a minus b, one unit of a minus b, and we end up right here, just like we did before. So this way of writing tells us that we just start at this point, offset from the origin by the amount of the vector b, and then we just slide along this line that's defined by a minus b which of course passes through B, passes through A, and just gives us the perfect picture of what's going on geometrically.